Hello, this is Jeffrey Fox. This is Unit 2 of the uh, Physics uh, Use Case um, section of the uh, Big Data Applications Analytics uh, course. Um, we've already introduced uh, the looking for the Higgs particle. Here we uh, get to a little more technical detail about gathering events and counting them up so that we can uh, see what's going on. We, of course, have our slogan, using clouds, running data analytics collaboratively on those 3,000 to 3,500 uh, participants in each experiment, CMS and ATLAS. And we're processing big, big data, 15 petabytes per year, to solve problems in physics informatics. And as noted, physics informatics does not exist on the web, as far as I can see. Um, we first discuss a little bit about the class software, uh, which is um, a lot of this will actually generalize to some of the other use cases. Remember, this is not a programming class, but software can either be just run or modified to illustrate some of the uh, uh, aspects of what we're, we're talking about. Python, there are two ways of doing it. Um, either on a server or on your local machine. We describe that a little bit uh, with the technology training available separately in uh, section three. And we use the Python distribution, which has NumPy and SciPy, because it's numerical and scientific Python is obviously relevant for the types of things we're trying to do here. And I say that also includes Matplotlib. We will use the IPython interface, which has a nice console, and also a web interface. The lectures are shown here, actually are done by me using the console. However, we recommend probably the web interface, which was came along after I uh, recorded the sections with the, sorry, the lessons which had the Python results in it. So you can either Download to your local client. Here's the NThought website with the Canopy product. Or you can access the same software on a, a cloud server on the Future Grid facility. If you want to have more detail, which is outside the scope of this course, you can do Python for data, read this book, Python for Data Analysis. And that's probably already out of date. It's really old, 2012. But um, Anyway, seriously, it's a pretty reasonable book. Um, so as mentioned, there are really um, three ways of running your programs, at least for um, Python. For Java, there are two ways. For Python, you either use the web-based interface, that's what uh, we'll illustrate in a later slide. Um, and you go to Future Grid, set up your virtual machine, you will be given a public IP address. You enter that IP address in your browser, and then you're redirected to the IPython shell, which will give you the web interface. Alternatively, you can actually run either the Java or Python as real code on the virtual machine. And then you go to the virtual machine, and you go to the, here's the directory for Python. And um, you um, just load, you just uh, go to the, the uh, directories for Python on Java and run the software. Alternatively, you can just do it in a classical fashion by downloading to your local machine. Of course, the advantage of the preloaded virtual machines, they've tended to get um, all the directories and the dependencies correct, which is often, especially for Java, somewhat non-trivial to do, um, for, unless you're very experienced. So uh, there are four codes in this uh, section, uh, which are available from the uh, resource, the, the files uh, tab. Um, this class one is used in uh, this, uh, this unit. Class two is only used in projects and homework, but it's available on the tab. Um, class three is used in the following uh, unit, and class four is used in the fourth unit of the physics section. Note that um, class three at the moment does not have a Java version because it has such sophisticated plotting. Uh, we did not, we were not able to reproduce that in Java. 
we notice that each code has several components. It runs different um, um, different choices of, uh, of parameters, and those are set up as IPython cells on the on that nice uh, web interface. And you can either run them together, which is what happens by default at the beginning, or you run them separately from the web or the console version of IPython by selecting them. Uh, <coughs> So for when I use the console, I just cut, cut and paste uh, the different components separately into IPython and then run them separately. On the web, you can actually, there's an option to select a given cell. Java will run all components at the same time as a single sort of batch job. Notice in each case, although uh, the simplest thing to do is just run the code. Um, but you're also welcome to modify the code, change the parameter sizes so that you get more data or less data and see what the impact is. I mean, less data is in, in this case non trivial I mean, sort of interesting, we'll actually discuss that because you'll see why they had to run the CERN accelerator for the time it took. Because with less data, you don't see the Higgs. There's too much statistical fluctuations. Um, here is the. Um, User interface, the web interface to IPython. And uh, these are these uh, codes we have for the physics section. With the other codes here, just codes you use um, for the different parts of the course. This one here is the actual tutorial, which is probably good to do before you do anything. And that's uh, mentioned in the section three, which is the technology training section. When you click on Higgs class one sloping, you will get this, which is the uh, notebook for this particular piece of Python. And here we have these cells, which uh, after each cell we have uh, the output, which in this case here is a simple output. We'll discuss it later in this uh, in this uh, unit, which is just uh, Python's version of the experiment, uh, which was the Atlas experiment, that uh, how that data looked. So it's roughly the same as what the experiment done. And we, we do it in Python to show, to actually experiment with different choices of, um, of number of events and things like that. And we will go and later on tell you why this stuff here called importance, uh, I mean, uh, except project method actually works and things like that. And here we will also tell you about Gaussian um, distributions, or normal distributions. Uh, so as I've already mentioned, the lectures use, are described using the Python implementation, not the Java. That's because I found Python easier to use. And they run examples. The, and we you will find we actually give the Java and the Python at the beginning. But when we have uh, slight modifications, we just give the Python for those modifications, not the Java. Because it's just Java's far, is not as concise as Python. And most people, even if you're not familiar with Python, it's sort of obvious what the commands are doing, because that's typical of a scripting language. You write what you, you write what you want in a very uh, concise fashion. Say the for when I recorded these lectures, I used IPython on my local laptop. And um, I would, however, not, I would, I would tend to recommend you use the future grid version. But that's, of course, your choice. And I say, I hope even if you're an expert on Java, you can read the Python code and at least get, have some understanding of how we're modifying the basic runs. Alternatively, you can actually look at the Java code. The Java code from the file that's on within the files tab, that has everything in it. It's just that the, we only reproduce in the lectures uh, the Java necessary, to, uh, base Java necessary to, to um, um, understand uh, roughly what's going on. 